perfectly awake. All the drug has done was to relax you so as to free your mind from whatever restrictions it's imposed upon itself. You see, you might have built up a strong wall of resistance around your memory, and the drug is like, uh, like the trumpets of Joshua blowing down the walls. Okay, let's begin. Guilty. 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 No. No. No, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. It's you. Yes, Kirk, it's Emily. There's never been anyone but me. Don't you know that? I'm the only one who can set you free. It's Emily, Kirk. May I come in? Yeah, come on in. See that? I'm finally knocking before I come in. That must mean that you're not an invalid anymore. At least not physically. But even that amnesia expert couldn't bring back my memory, could he? Oh, don't be discouraged, Kirk, please. Emily, I heard what he told you. He said that I might never get my memory back. That I might live the rest of my life in this emptiness. No. It won't be empty. Because we'll be together. you could hear us talking. I thought you were still asleep in Daddy's office. No, I was wide awake. My, my perceptions were so strange. It was as though I could see both sides of a door at the same time. Well, maybe you didn't really hear what Dr. Wellman said. No, Emily, I heard what he said. He said I had a terrific resistance. That he couldn't force me to go into the past. The reason had to be more than just a concussion. But if you don't know the reason, why torture yourself about it? Because it had to be something awful. Emily, it had to be something that I wanted to forget so badly. <sighs> Emily, don't, don't you see? I have this... I have this feeling that I, that I did something terrible before I came to this house. No, I don't believe that, and I don't think you should either. Emily, I have this feeling... feeling deep in my, my gut that... that I did something wrong, that... I'm guilty of something. You're probably just thinking about what happened the night we were married. About taking the money and the jewelry from the safe. That's what's making you feel guilty. Maybe that's it. <laughs> but I told you. I'm as much at fault as you are. We both did it, Kirk. Only we both didn't keep running with the stuff, did we? Only I did that. Look, you can't keep thinking of yourself as a criminal. I'm worried. I'm worried about what other people are thinking about me. Emily, I'm scared. When I saw, saw Dr. Wellman for the first time, I, I, I didn't know if I could, I, I could trust him. Well, how do you feel about him now? I, I, I guess he's only trying to help me. But I don't think I can be helped. Well, I, I know a lot of people, Emily, would, would, would love to have their, their, their memories ripped out of their heads, but I can't handle it. But your past is not erased from my mind. You were part of my life for six precious months. And now you're part of it again. Are you so sure you want me to be part of it? Of course I do. You're my husband. Emily, that, that kid you married ten years ago, he, 
He's a stranger to you now. Well, we'll just have to get to know each other again, that's all. We'll start a new beginning. Just don't run away from me this time, please. No. No, I promise I won't run away. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, in, in, that, in that dream I had, I, I saw something. I saw... I saw a woman. She, she was so far away from me. And then, and then I went to her, Emily. Well, who was she? Did you see her face? Yeah, yeah I saw the face. It was you. There. You see? You did have a memory of the past. You remembered me. Oh, me, Kirk. I'm never going to run away from you. Not in your dreams. Not in reality. Not ever. I just don't know how I feel about her. Raven now. Oh, well, I know she has her faults. So does everyone. Well, granted, most people have their virtues as well. Name one of Raven's. Right. Just one. Don't, Think hard now. Don't rush me. Uh, what? Well, she did give me Jamie at a time when I thought I could never have any children of my own. Do you really believe that she was thinking about you when she bundled up our child and dumped him in your lap? Oh, come on, it wasn't quite like that. Jamie was staying with us at the time. I'll tell you what Raven did. I mean, I'll tell you what she accomplished by this little stunt. Okay. One, she got rid of the baby so she could fly off to London unencumbered. Two, she made you feel grateful by the way she did it. And three, she made me feel rotten. All by using Jamie, by using her own child. If Raven has a virtue, it's cleverness, cunning. Can I ask you something? Sure. Do you still love Raven? Now, don't answer too quickly. I want you to think about it. Come on. No, I don't. You were once very much in love with her. Yeah, I'm fallible. What is it the fortune cookie says? If man makes a mistake and does not learn from it, he has made two mistakes. You're impossible. Which I'm, I'm serious now, Logan. Are you sure? I mean, you don't turn off your feelings that easy. It's not like a, it's not like a water tap that you turn on and off. No, it's not easy. But I had help. Raven turned off that tap herself permanently by the way she treated our son. I don't know, Logan. I just, I just can't believe Raven does not love Jamie. I mean, what else would she want? Him? I don't know. I don't know. The only thing I can come up with is she wants to hurt me. See, I have this vision of Raven walking around in London. It's raining. She's wet, hopefully, and bored. And she's occupying her time by trying to think of ways to stir up trouble. And then it comes to her. Aha, she says. Jamie. I know what you're saying. What you're saying is that life is just a total game to Raven. That's exactly what I'm saying. I think that's what life is to her. A game she makes up. She makes up the rules and then insists on being the winner. I think that's true of everything in her life, including her... Her love life, love, sex, men, women, babies, all just pawns to Raven pieces on her game board that... I am sorry. <laughs> this is quite a melodramatic speech I'm making here. I didn't mean to go on. Don't apologize. Listen, I'm the one who brought up the subject. Well, let's change it, shall okay. we? Would you haven't mentioned Julia all night. How's she doing? <laughs> She's fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, not like her mother, then, huh? Uh, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I happen to uh, plan on going to see her tomorrow at the hospital. Yeah. About one, you want to come? That sounds like fun. I'd like to do that. Are you sure? Yeah. After all, she's, she's sort of uh, my mother's namesake. Is she? One o'clock, you say? Mm -hmm. You want to have a quick lunch before we go? I'd like that. Good. Let's do it. Okay. Would anyone like an after-dinner drink? Oh, no, oh. thank you. I'm... Duck. Oh, you have to try some of these, though. Oh, Come my on. goodness. Where Just are we going to put this? Bit. Well, let's forget about lunch tomorrow and have a little now, shall we? No way. Oh, come on. You're not getting off that easy. Need a grape. Me too. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I got to stop. I got to get out of here. Stayed too late, eating far too much. No, no, don't go, Logan. It isn't all that late. <laughs> I got a couple of babysitters I got to turn loose, Mr. and Mrs. Stoner. Mr. and Mrs.? 
You mean Calvin couldn't handle it alone? Lost his nerve. Long about bath time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you get really stuck for a babysitter, I'm very available these days. Yeah, well, no offense, but I don't think you'd be right for the job. What? Oh, you mean because of Raven? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you there, April. I really don't think you ought to get involved in that kind of problem right now. Mm, I also said I was not going to take sides, so... Logan, I wonder if we might be able to come up with some legal maneuver to prevent these attempts to take Jamie from you. Mike, I'd like nothing better. I just don't know what it would be, that's all. The only thing I can think of to do right now is to push on with the adoption and hope to establish my legal claim. Well, even if you can establish your legal status as Jamie's parent, that doesn't guarantee custody. What else can I do? Prepare for battle. Hope that that serves as a deterrent to Raven when she realizes that the court recognizes me as the boy's father. Yeah, well, that might work. But uh, do you think she might take it to court? I hope not. I certainly don't want to go to court. We all feel that way. And uh, you don't want to take uh, Elliot to court over the uh, unicorn. <sighs> did you hear about that? Yes, I did. I just... Uh... Hate the idea of his owning the unicorn and benefiting at all from Margot's death. Yes, I hate the idea of going to court even more. Mike, isn't there something that we could do to fight that? I'm afraid not. We'd have to prove that Margot meant to take that title back, and that would be very difficult. Yeah. Sometimes I think the law is altogether too careful. Fine thing for the district attorney to say. Yeah, shocking, isn't it? We ought to throw that bum out of office. That's right. <laughs> well, listen, all I want to say is that I just hope... That Elliot Doran doesn't get rich from all this. I mean, if he does, that'd be... would just be unfair. I doubt very much if he'll get rich. At least, the way the club has been going. Why do you say that? I was curious and spoke to Margot's accountant. He says the club has been losing money steadily. Good. Elliot doesn't deserve anything better. Look at all these unpaid bills. Some of them go back eight months. Do you realize that? Well, I, I know, Mr. Dornish. I've been kind of waiting for the good weather. I, I figured business would improve that. Now, what kind of order is this? Has the accountant seen them? Not yet. I guess he will after the next audit. Hey, look, Mr. Dorn. I don't know anything about finances. I, I'm just a bartender. Now, when your wife asked me to manage this place, she didn't tell me I had to make it profitable. I see you managed to pay yourself a nice salary. Well, of course. But I didn't do any skimming, if that's what you mean. I just took my regular salary, period. The regular salary, huh? And you also gave yourself two raises. But why not? I mean, my duties increased, right? <sighs> ah, Charlie, Charlie. It is true. If you paid these bills, the unicorn would no longer be operating. There's a debit here of fifteen to $20,000. Well, it's lucky I didn't pay them, isn't it, huh? Go and take care of the bar, Charlie. Right on, Mr. Dorn, huh? <laughs> right on. So this is my wife's legacy. Something tells me this is no mistake, darling. You must have planned it this way. There's no point in hanging around here. I'm just getting more and more depressed. I wonder how the party is going. Telephone. <laughs> well, just let it ring. No, it might be for me. Oh, come on, I have to let people know where I am. I'm chief of police, Raven. <sighs> Raven, I answer the phone. All right, all right, all right. Hello? You certainly took your time answering the phone. Well, there's no phone in the bedroom, and I had to come all the way into the living room. I hope that's your idea of humor. I have to go. Listen, don't hang up on me, damn it. I was calling to find out how the party is going. Oh, it's going very well. So how are you doing? Rotten, thank you very much. I'm with the unicorn in my old office. You do remember the old office. It's just as shabby as the rest of the place. And the shabbiest thing about it all is the profit and loss statement. Or should I say the loss statement? Well, look, Charlotte, I'm glad that you're feeling better, but I do have company. 
You know, Charlotte, that was very cute telling your friend Derek Mallory about my poor sick girlfriend. Now, listen, Raven, that's the last time you're going to play a trick like that on me. Charlotte, I have to go. <laughs> Wait a second. If you think that your chief Mallory is going to help you with your little problem, you're welcome to him. But that's the last you're going to see of me. Is that clear? Don't be so definite. Nothing is definite in this world. I still want your friendship. I'll improve it. All right, look. We'll get together for dinner tomorrow night. Just the two of us, and we'll have a very nice little talk, okay? Yeah, all right. I'll see you tomorrow night at 7.30. Good night. That was Charlotte, <laughs> Elliot's girlfriend. She's feeling a lot better, and she wanted to have a little talk, probably about Elliot. Now, where were we? No, I have got to get going. You will do no such thing. No, no, it's late. No, no, no. We're supposed to be discovering each other, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing here? Raven, hmm? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, then I'll show you. I thought we should talk about what happened this afternoon, about Dr. Wellman and his experiment. Oh, yes. Just come from talking to Kirk about it. He overheard what Dr. Wellman said afterwards about the possibility of his not regaining his memory again. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about that? I don't know, Daddy. I guess I'm kind of ambivalent. Of course, I want Kirk to be well again. But you're also afraid that his memory might create problems. I saw how worried you were during the experiment. And I just wanted to let you know that I had no idea what Neil was going to do. I didn't even know he was coming here. Oh, Daddy, that doesn't matter. I know he only wanted to help him. Before he left, he said that we might want to consider sending Kirk to some institution. Daddy, no! It's all right, it's all right. I told him there was no way we, we would do any such thing. I mean, it's not as if Kirk didn't have a home here. Do you really mean that, Daddy? Do you really feel that this is Kirk's home now, like it used to be? Well, we could hardly send him back out into the night without a memory, could we? Does that mean that you're willing to forget what he did wrong? That you're ready to forgive him? Yes, Emily, I'm, I'm ready to forgive him and and forget and, and do anything else to, to make you happy. You and Kirk both. Oh, Daddy. I'm so glad. I don't know what the future will bring, Emily, but I guess nobody knows that. But I'd like to think that, that you'll be taken care of, that having Kirk will give you strength, and especially if I'm not here. Oh, don't say that. We'll all be around for years and years. Well, I'm not making any plans to live forever. You'll live a lot longer when you know that your daughter is happily married. Just remember that a happy marriage takes time. It's something that doesn't happen all at once. I know that, Daddy. And I also know that Kirk and I aren't really husband and wife. Not yet. Yeah. But we will be soon. Very soon. Oh. Boy, I have to tell you that this is the most relaxed evening I've spent in a long time. Oh, I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you're sure there's nothing I can do to help you, I think I'm going to head up to bed. No, no, nothing at all. You go ahead. But I know I have a wonderful feeling that I am going to have a dreamless night tonight for a change. Why, you've been having bad dreams? Well, not really. I mean, well, not really nightmares. I guess that's kind of strange considering all that's happened. But, uh, well, my dreams have been kind of quiet and peaceful, but I just as soon not have them anyway. Why? Well, it's kind of hard to face reality. Well, 
Most of the dreams I have are about Draper. Of course, he's still alive. Then I wake up and... Well, it's just that much harder to face the real world, you know? But not tonight. Hmm? Good. You sleep well. Oh, you too, dear. Mm. Thanks, Nancy. for us to be alone. 